<clears throat> I know I haven't done this in a long time, but um, here we are now. I wanted to share with you guys what I got over the weekend. This is an oiler, you guys know. This is an exciting moment for me. I don't have one with this. I don't know. Um, and then I got casters. Oddly enough, I have a project with casters, and these are wooden casters. Look at this. Uh, and this one's plastic, but I like the I like this more than this. I don't know. It's kind of the same, but I don't know. Just the aesthetics of this. But um, I have a project coming up real soon with casters, and it was just odd that I I find it and. It was cool because a dollar for these two and two dollars for this. And oh man, I would have paid like 20 bucks for this. But don't tell the guy. Anyways, thank you so much. Alrighty then, let's get to our project of the day. Um, we are stri I'm stripping the three, three, three ring uh, fine holders off their plastic coats. I'm going to treat this project or these ring the holders as if they were books. As if I was binding a book. And so I want to take off that plastic because uh, one, I think that fabric that I want to use won't really stick to it. And two, because I want the edges of my bind of my book covering uh, to be crisp. And I feel like that little trim that the plastic has is not good for it. And so I want to take everything off as if uh, we were starting from scratch. And I'm keeping, I see if you guys, if you guys can tell, I'm keeping the plastic uh, cover from the front and the back just because it's a nice thick plastic and I can use it in the inside for a cup for a bag or something like that. And these are the fabrics for today. Um, I'm going to start with that nice little detail that goes on the uh, trim. It's like a, it's like a trim that goes on the spine that um, I see a lot of books have. I don't necessarily know if it's part of that binding pro process that they do they did before but to me it looks like more like a thick trim so I'm gonna use the flooring uh, that I believe I got at either Home Depot or Lowe's before they were free but I think now they're 20 cents a little square and so but either way if it's 20 cents or free um, these are always available like um, they're at the flooring department um i have them because i use them as cutting mats they're great for cutting mats and also if you did like vinyl in your flooring and you have some stuff left over this is a great idea to use for that and so i'm using one inch strips to make uh, a two layer kind of molding so i'm using the bottom part is one inch by the thickness of the um, the spine and then i'm doing another little strip on top of that which is I think half an inch. So I'm doing double double mold, molding on that little detail on the spine. Once I have my pieces cut to the um, dimensions of the spine, I'm going to uh, glue them, but please do not forget to score them with your knife because this will fall off. This will split off or separate because it's supposedly meant to be durable and not, you know, or like, what is it called when the flooring is covered so that it's um, stuff doesn't stick to it? So to make sure it does stick to it, make sure you score all your pieces. So because I want my that little trim to have a dome-like um, dimension, I'm going to put a little strip right across up and down of the base of trim and I'm going to wrap it with a plastic it's a, it's a plastic bag but i just went around and cut strips of that plastic bag so it's a little stretchy i mean i guess now that i'm thinking about it i could have used uh, that clinging film for the kitchen but for me it's all about what i have in my hand and what i can use and recycle from the stuff that i throw away i all often think of it as okay how can i use this and how and then that's how i come up with ideas and the bag is something that i uh, always think of okay this would be a great idea for for this uh, technique that I've been wanting to use this for a while anyways as you can see here uh, with the pressure of the bag I am doming the bottom part 
and I'm make sh making sure you put a lot of glue, even if it like drips all over the place, just because I want to make sure that it don'ts. And I do it exactly on the same uh, level, supposedly. I eyeballed it, but you know. Um, I did all those little dimensions on the same height because I plan to stand these all along together. So I want them all in the same, uh, same spot. Okay, but this is the trick. So now, you know, you're going to bind your book as if you're, well, your folder as if you're binding a book. Um, but there's one hitch. I don't want the fabric that I'm going to um, use on the bottom to be covering the little dimension uh, molding that I have because I feel like it's going to take away the not depthness but you know it takes away because the the spine is going to be leather so i want it to be you know showing that molding um that that little dimension or detail i guess as much as possible and if you put a leather coating on the bottom you already take some of that possibility of it being more detailed or more you know like for the leather to really get in those crevices i feel like this fabric I don't want it to impede it, so I want to avoid like more glue, more fabric. So I really want that detail to stand out. As it is, it's, it's hard with leather to get a lot of detail. Well, for me, because I'm starting, this is like I'm new to leather and I'm new to, um, you know, working how to detail it and bind it as much. As much as you guys see me doing leather, I feel like I am very in a very beginning stage of leather and book binding you know i'm very artistic in my way of binding but not uh knowledgeable or professional in leather binding so i do not consider myself by any means any kind of professional so i just go based on what i i believe in my heart that um may cause me a problem um, I'm all about trying to avoid problems, and I feel like if I use the fabrics to include in that um, binding method, that is going to um, just take away a little bit of that detail on the trim. So I cut, I measure where that little trim would be, and I just cut the holes out. And after all that, um, I guess everything else is pretty much the basic uh, book covering system or book binding. Not binding. It's not binding, right? It's not. Um, it's just covering. It's just wrapping. The book wrapping, I guess, um, part. I think this is very. I think most of most of the people that are in this group or in this channel out here are very familiar with this process. I don't. I don't think that I should be talking about it because I'm not too good about it either. <laughs> um, there's a lot of, you know, good YouTube videos or detailed videos as to how you do a book um, wrapping. But for me, it's just, you know, get it on there because, you know, the corners for me, I'm not putting too much detail or the spine because both spine and um, corners are going to be covered with leather. I will give you one hint or one idea um tip do not put the glue where it's going to be the the fabric's going to be visible because this glue will give you a wet mark from um from the the glue so if you i do like i did spirals but i did very lightly spirals just so it's like a little tacky but you see right there next to my spine you see that line that's the glue line but I knew it was going to happen, so that's why I only used glue where I knew it was going to have the cover for um, the spine. I just had to show you guys, not show you, but tell you guys about this leather. I bought this leather at a flea market. It was $10. And it's like one yard by like two, maybe even three yard long piece of perfectly squared, not perfectly squared, but like pretty nicely shaped leather. And I love the tan in this. But um, I knew you guys would understand my excitement because, you know, I'm about leather. I love using leather on my books. Anywho, um, to make, sh make sure, see, like right here, I noticed that my, that fabric on my spine wasn't glued too well. And because I'm gluing my leather to my spine, 
I want to make sure it's glued well because if it's not glued to the to the spine, then I'm gluing leather to a floating piece of fabric, and it, that's a big no no in my book because then it's gonna be wonky. You know what I mean? As a, I am already wonky enough, like because I'm not too good at this yet, and actually I'm not good at it at all. <laughs> so for me to give it more problems is like, you know, seeking for more problems. Anywho. In this one, I this is my first one that I did, but in the other ones, I let the that first section that's like flat, I let that section dry first, and I put it flat, and I put something heavy on that section just so that I can get that section glued off really well, and then I go in back and glue that little detail, molding detail, after, and then I let that dry, and then I went back and did the sides. But since this one was my first one, you guys see that if I don't do that drawing of that first big flat, look at how bulky and lumpy it becomes. And so no matter how much I try to shape it and restretch it, which I do later, it, it still comes out a little lumpier than the other ones. I mean, at the end, I do manage to take a lot of it off because I stretch it here and then when I glue the sides I stretch it even more and it comes off a, a lot but if you're going to do this method I recommend you do smaller sections which is that little section and then little by little so that I get more detail and I don't have to struggle with it a lot more now here I, I want you to notice one thing um this one this fabric's a little thicker that's why I put more glue and that way it doesn't come to the other side because it's like that thick velvet but in other case Always check that your paint, your glue won't seep through. See, like on that side, it did seep through. But anyways, um, one hot tip. What was the tip I was going to tell you? Oh, what I did, I don't know if you guys can see in here, right there. If you freeze frame this right here, you'll see that the curve of that, uh, you know how the folders, the three ring folders, have like little curves on the tips? I inverted that inwards so that it's towards the spine. Because I want the, the tips on my books to be sharp so that it happens with my leather and all the way to with my velvet. I put it inside to, in, towards the spine so now I have a, a very crisp sharp edge on the outside. Did you understand me? No. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Just the little curvy tips go inside so that you have a pointy tip on the outside of the, of the book. I have to record this and I have to let you guys know because you guys know I always eyeball things. Anyways, it seemed kind of odd the space that I got here for my the three ring thing. Because I eyeballed it and I glued it down and I was like, wait, it looks kind of odd. And look at it. It does look kind of odd. But what makes it look kind of odd is the squares. But I went ahead and measured it and I was like, I want to measure it. So just because it seemed very odd. See, okay, look at the measurement. When I say my measurement, don't laugh at me, okay? I go like this. One half plus one. You see the little line right there? Yeah, that's what I say. One, one plus one. And I go here. And I go one, one half plus one. It's like to the 16th exact. And I eyeball it. I'm telling you, train your eye. It works.
Okay, so back in the beginning of YouTube land life for me, for us, for Creativity Incorporated, um, I made this ephemera folder, but it and it had like a housed uh, scissors here. Look, uh, right there, and then it housed. Uh, oh, it housed um, the little thing that that uh, damages the edges of the of stuff. I don't forget. Anyways, I will get one here. I don't remember, but it was like too long ago. It became too fat. <clears throat> I had attached a uh, a kickstand, like the ones from the frames, like the picture frames, to go back here, and it was attached to here. And so when you when you put it up, when it opened, and you attached it. I totally forgot how it went. I'm a, I should have looked back in my video. But when you attached it to that, it held this up like this in the so it was just easier for me to look at. But I, I stuffed and stuffed and stuffed stuff on it like like this I cleaned it out, but it was just like you know, I started stuffing stuff in here. So um it became so heavy so the the leg I think was like broken or bent or something because of the weight anywho i want to put everything i had um i used my my binding technique of using the cable staple and um but now that i don't need this i'm gonna see join me in the ride i want to see if um see i just threw stuff in here I want to see if <clears throat> that I can put these in there. Let's see. I don't want to just cut it. I might do that, but there we go. Okay. Here we go. The kids are making a bunch of noises in the background. You know, I'm, I some I feel like I should say sorry about that, but I can't apologize for my kids making noise. This is something that happens here in the in the cave of creativity. Lots of kids laughing. Anyways, let's see. Is this? Oh no, they're out of uh, where I need them to be. I may cut them out. I mean, I could do this. I could do two things. I can either cut it out, cut the staples out, and then rehole it. Which I think I might just do that. I was also thinking I could do a, like a little strip and then rehole that, but I could just rehole on here. It's just it's too hard. It's gonna have to be the bent one, and then on top of that, it's going to be the um, the plastic and my hole puncher is not that sharp but let's try it anyways if um i the other feelings that i have i have a lot of feeling that i don't really need to do that to this but i if i could but i have more of these page a lot of more of these pages so i don't really need it but these are the baseball cards that i have the baseball cards like little pockets then i also have these i don't no, they might have been for pictures or something, but these are only half a sheet like this. And then I have all the, you know, the standard 8 by 10s But if you don't have the half a sheet one, I did these to some of my pages. I would grab like the standard one, but, and I would just cut in the middle and use the middle for little ones and then the big ones for like strips and stuff like that. And I would only do it on one side so that doesn't don't do it all the way to the end so it doesn't rip and i think it's good but anyways these are my baseball card ones i loved how they came out this worked out great so it doesn't rip my pockets i loved how this worked out and i really like it so that's why i was thinking of just ripping off the the staples or cutting them off and then rehold this i have a bunch of these and they're already loaded so i don't have to do it but Anyways, um, I'm going to put these in there as they are. And I picked these two, the blue one and the pink one. Because I have a lot here, plus I have a lot 
not here so yeah let's fill that up and then i'll show you how that went okay one last little detail i forgot to show you before i fill them up so i bought this roll of trim at walmart and i'm just gonna fill it up i mean fill it up <laughs> glue it on here glue the the edges on here Let's see. see how beautiful they look Okie dokie, and here they are. Look at this, people. They look amazing. I love it. I love it. Here's one. Here's number of does. Here's number three. And here's number four. I know I kept you in the loop for which color was going to be number four, sort of. Um, I'm excited because it's canvas, so I can always paint it, dye it, whatever. But I like how it looks, all of it. So um, I have a book, journal, and I like to incorporate these along my office, so I like them. Anyways, let's start with this one. Anyway. This one's going to be for stencils. So I have them in here. I put some in pouches like this ones. And then my daughter's favorite stencils. And then um, I cut some of my mom, cut these up. But um, I don't feel bad about it because I never used the whole sheet anyway. But um, I mean, it does hurt. But this one I didn't have to, but I still... I still cut up the, just to trim up the edges. Some more stencils. And then I have that whole Tim Holt ones, like right here, like this. I guess I could put them against this or the other one, but I like the flippability and the whole thing. Reason for the for the book, uh, I mean the ring, is so I can have accessibility to each of them, right? Anyways, that's for this one. For this one, I've decided I'm going to, I did a, oh, I did the stencils and like templates and stuff like that, that I use for, for like in my channel, like, well, in this channel, but, or like in my projects and like printables leftovers. So I, I, I don't know where I have the other ones, but I know I have some of the, of these. So these are the ones that came in the kit for the lemons kit. I think it was like, I don't know if it was last month or the month before, but actually it was, yeah, September. So I am, um, this is the sticker sheet. So I put my extras here and I think I, I'm going to leave more space for some of them. And then, um, stencils, just a little templates and stencils for my corners, the things that I cut up of aluminum and stuff like that. And this is a future project. And then I did my little ex libris design and i have the it's not the original but actually it might be the original but this is it but this is in big and then i printed some in small too look let's see oh i don't have any more that i had some but this is my little thing that goes in my books so and then other templates here that i had uh previously made and are new and then i 
I stuck some of my daughter's drawings in here. Um, on this one, and then on this one, I'm going to be keeping um, this one and this one's the same. Uh, these are ephemera, but these are like cut up ones that I have. These are uh, Tim Holtz. I put all my Tim Holtz together. So see, I have put them right here and right here. And that's it on this one. Then I have other uh, stickers from other company. And then I have like paper remnants that I turn into tags or just paper that I liked that goes together. So like these go together. So I kept them together. Um, these are my pockets of, uh, this is the other ephemera book that I had. So I kept it here and for now I have, I kept the staples, but um, <clears throat> this is it. So I clip stuff to the back because, uh, you know, you could, I can flip stuff like this, like I do sometimes to the back, but then I like to do this at the back to keep stuff that go together together, uh, that don't fit on the page. So pretty much um, keeping like little stuff that I can like come through and pick at. Um, not necessarily ephemera, but like size of like a speciality, speciality paper and things like that or big paper. And then now I kept, let me show you. I kept the, the front of the pay of the foils the folders have a like one of these and i kept all of them the front and the back of them and i was thinking of making like pockets to the sides or something i'm not too sure because i like the cleanness of it but uh i have this for um for that purpose but if not i guess i could always use it in another project right and then on this one same thing same deal um my ephemera and these are all um baseball card holders on this one it's like uh on this one is um flowers like na nature so like flowers mushroom butterflies and all that stuff i really don't use them that much like i only use i use a butterfly a lot but these flowers i don't use them as much but i have a, a lot of like dried up leaves that i love some of my uh, my favorite leaves I don't like that they lose the color because that's why I'm keeping them. But um, I like the shape and the, the size of them, the veining of it too. So on this one, it's a whole 8 by 10 but I cut a little slit on here, just a little tiny one to put this in here. And um, I cut out from books. I think there's two different books in here, so I got to split it up. But this one's like that one sheet that has a, that two halves. So... Um, yeah, just pretty much things that are like, um, like these are napkins and like s special paper that I don't have other places to put. But when I'm looking through this kind of thing, I can see that I can create something out of that, like a little ephemera or something. I can stamp on it. But yeah, this is the spine. So these will look together like this. Let's see. Let's see if I can put them together for you mm, at least the bottom right the camera is so close to the to the camera oh my gosh don't you guys think that looks so cool and i could always stamp something here or write something on here not sure but yeah that's that's kind of what i was thinking of what to do what to do and i'm going to take my time because i don't want to ruin it uh and so I want to pick the right thing to it. It's going to sit on my bookshelves just like this. Well, not like this, but like standing up. Um, let me show you. Uh, there you go. Well, let me put them up right. So thank you. Sorry, I don't mean to dizzy you guys, but kind okay, of there you go. There you go. You guys see that? I know there's a lot of like sun glare, but kind of goes like that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this um, video. If you like it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If um, if you do, do decide to cover your own room and then show me how you do it. Show me what you do. I've seen people just do the like fabric, 
um i wanted mine to look the aesthetics of my office but tell me other ideas that you guys have used and done on your folder fold, file folders anyways thank you so much uh, for watching this video till next time guys bye